Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Now, Nigeria's healthcare system faces significant challenges, including limited access to healthcare, inadequate infrastructure, and a shortage of medical professionals. Now, leveraging on technology presents a promising pathway to address these issues and to enhance the overall healthcare landscape in Nigeria. Joining us to discuss the future of healthcare and how tech can address these challenges in Nigeria and Africa is Ife Oluwa Dari Jensen. She's the CEO of Health Tracker. Good morning, Ife Oluwa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Rume. All right. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're talking about the healthcare system in Nigeria, and we know that it's not the best. Um, mm -hmm. There are people who cannot afford to go to the hospitals. There are people who self-medicate. Um, you know, there are people who cannot just even afford food. Talk more about having to check their bodies. And that's just where we live in currently. That's our current reality in Nigeria. But I want to get your take, especially being in the healthcare system. What has it been for you? How have you been able to, you know, understand what the Nigerian factor can do to people and what you, you know, as a CEO of Health Tracker, is doing about it? Thank you for that question, Rume. Yeah. And I'll start with a story. So I got into um, health technology because of a personal experience. Mm -hmm. So I got the call about four years ago that my dad passed. Uh, and it was shocking because there was nothing wrong with, to, with him at, as long as we were concerned mm -hmm. until the doctor told us he had hypertension and diabetes untreated for so long that it had degenerated into a stroke. Um, so I literally watched someone who seemingly was healthy go, you know, just pass away just like that. And his story is not unique. There are many Nigerians who are walking across, going to work, coming back, and have no idea that they're just one emergency away from death. Hmm. Um, of course, you know the statistics already, less than 80% of Nigerians are, are insured. Um, and we basically are self-medicating as you mentioned mm -hmm. um not going to the hospital early enough to get me early medical diagnosis and rise in non-communicable diseases is basically increasing as well so um and that was what led me to start health tracker so when we started it was to create a platform that allowed people to access early me medical diagnostics because most of the time especially for non-communicable diseases we can be treated it can be treated if caught early Right. Mm -hmm. So we created a platform called healthtracker.com um, that people could go on that platform from their phones and order lab tests. You could order a full body checkup. Uh, and we even made it more convenient where someone, a professional can come to your house to take the samples. Uh, and then we were working with labs as well so that they can run those samples and you get your results digitally. Once you get your results digitally, we we're offering complimentary doctor's consultation to review your results and then link you to treatment and care. We knew that we wanted people to access medical diagnostics and we were leveraging innovation and technology, mm. right? So that was the um, idea that we started with. Mm. Um, and with that, we've delivered over 40,000 tests at home. People were going on healthtracker.com to order their sexual health screenings. They were going to order cervical cancer screening. And that has been a unique way for people to access medical screenings mm. um, and get access to early diagnosis. It is important that everyone knows the current status of their health. And the only way to do it is diagnosis. Mm. Exactly. The only way to do it, because if you do not, you know, diagnose yourself or if someone, if the doctor, a certified doctor doesn't, you know, diagnose with you with something, you don't even know what you're treating. But I love the exactly. fact that, I love the fact that, you know, you started something, obviously from a personal experience, but then you're doing something for your community. But let's bring it back to Nigeria because this is just you, one person who is championing this cause. What do you think the Nigerian government is doing about this? Because it's definitely a challenge in Nigeria, whereby people cannot, you know, they don't even know if they're going to be alive in the next minute. And like you rightly said, you're one emergency away from death. So what do you think the Nigerian government is doing and how can they even help, you know, with the, with the health sector? What are certain things they need to put in place because you are one person, there's only so much you can do. But when the government starts to, um, you know, set up different things like this with technology, it helps even more people. Voices are being amplified. So what do you think the, go the Nigerian government can do to ensure that we have a better healthcare system in Nigeria using um, technology? 
as as you know as a means as well yes yeah, so Rima, thank you for that question uh just to pick it back on what you said i'm one person mm -hmm. uh one of the things that i've also realized is one person can trigger a change mm -hmm. um and i'm not just one person there are a lot of you know um medical the medical system is getting strengthened mm -hmm. with the technology that we're, we're providing so people are leveraging some of the technology that we have so for example medical doctors who typically do not have access to treating or diagnosing uh, patients that fire away from them are now leveraging on health tracker to reach them do you understand mm -hmm. um and also one of the things that the government can do obviously is ensure that that collaboration between private sector and public sector is strong because with the private sector because we're agile um we we have the technology we're building this technology very fast we're innovating fast enough we mm -hmm. can actually collaborate with the government to improve the services um that had been offered today and then the other bit of it would have to be health insurance mm -hmm. no matter what uh no matter how much um we do and provide all this technology and all these incredible solutions healthcare solutions how do people afford it um so one of the things that i think the government is now doing um and should continue to do would have to be penetrating and ensuring that every nigerian have health insurance mm -hmm. because as you said if people have to choose between food and seeking health care, mm -hmm. they would choose food. Of course. However, if everyone is placed on health insurance, whatever form of health insurance scheme, mm -hmm. then you know that you will not be charged when you go into the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and that fear of how much it costs can really be a deterrent. So I think the government would um, need to continue on their mission to ensure that there is global insurance uh, coverage for everyone living in nigeria and then for us in the private sector we need to then work with government to be healthcare providers to innovate to ensure that technology that we're building can scale and mm. can reach millions of lives in nigeria it mm. has to be collaboration that's fantastic I, I always say collaborations are good because um it's almost like two people with their strengths coming together to form you know even a more powerful force but let me just play devil's advocate a little bit because i mean we might be talking from a place of privilege there are people in the rural areas that do not have phones or do not have devices that you know would aid technology so how do you reach out to such people because when i hear of your platform and obviously what we're talking about today you know is the role of technology but technology is only for certain people who can afford it so how about people who cannot, who are probably in the rural areas, the villages, how do they even get these same services without using their phones or laptop or any device that, you know, requires this form of technology? Irma, you're absolutely co correct. So at El Tracker, we have thought about that. Uh, so even when we launched, again, I grew up in a small town in Ocean State in Elisha. Mm. So the problem... I understood it very well because obviously, as I said, I lost my dad. We yeah. lived in Elisha, right? So the biggest problem in that area is definitely just not technology, is the infrastructure mm. available. So one of the things we did in Atel Tracker was to go to those locations and then, you know, have them on our platform such that we're able to reach the healthcare facilities in those locations in the rural communities and then find the community health workers as the as the in route to ensuring that they can take care of their people mm -hmm. and then helping them to facilitate that um, transfer of um, samples that transfer of skills um, from just the centralized healthcare facilities to the community health workers who can actually reach the people in their community. Mm. So a good example of that would be in Kaduna State. So in Kaduna State, we partnered with um, an agri -tech com agricultural company who, you know, was servicing female farmers. Female farmers, these female farmers do not speak English. They wow. do not... Um, they speak Awusa, not, but not even like the Kaduna Awusa or Kano Aduna. This is the real, mm -hmm. um, you know, dialect Kaduna. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we knew that these women on a normal day would not have access to cervical cancer screenings. Mm -hmm. So we did a pilot project um, and we went there. We, you know, we worked with the community um, health workers and we worked with the healthcare, for the primary healthcare centers at that location. Um, and then the tertiary, tertiary healthcare 
facilities as well, because we know that if anyone is positive for cervical cancer, we would need to route them uh, for treatment and care at the tertiary hospitals, mm. right? So um, the work we did there was to ensure that all these women, you know, could access cervical cancer screening through our HPV self-sampling kits. So with these kits, even women who are not educated, um, they don't need to even use their phones. The community health workers in that in their vicinity are mm. the ones who then become um, the, the, the providers the provider for yeah. them, right? Who then use the access they have to um, their phones, to whatever small tab that they have, mm. um, and then work as a as an agent mm. to deliver healthcare to them. Mm. Um, so we're constantly looking at the way to uh, at different creative, innovative ways to reach. Uh, people in low income and underserved communities. Another example is um, a recent um, a recent product that we launched. We called it Lola. Lola is an AI uh, chatbot, and we launched it on WhatsApp because we know that in Nigeria, WhatsApp already has over ninety five percent penetration. Mm. So most people have WhatsApp on their on their phones, right? Um, so why ask them to download another app? In fact, most people do not even have enough data <laughs> to, to download. To actually yeah. They don't yeah. have enough space on their phones mm -hmm. to um, to keep another mobile app on it. So yeah. we're using WhatsApp to disseminate menstrual health information um, to women that in underserved communities, right? So yeah. all you need to do is just say hi to Lola mm -hmm. or say hello to Lola. And now we're even beginning to, to ensure that Lola can speak different languages, can speak Yoruba, can speak Hausa, wow. so that when you uh, we want everyone no matter that is your, that is quite um, innovative yeah that's... no matter your social economic state um mm. status uh mm. rume to actually access healthcare because it is our fundamental right uh, and that's okay. some of the work that we're doing yeah. at health Tracker. so yeah. we we were a little bit out of time but i want to talk about data privacy especially if sure. i have to download the app or give you all of my information how am i protected oh absolutely i mean it is a the responsible thing to do um, to ensure that your data is protected. One, at Health Tracker, uh, we definitely are compliant with, with the needs there um, mm. and the, um, or the guideline that they have put in place. But beyond mm. that, the way we also have done um, you know, our data privacy and our policy is mm. to ensure that we are only collecting data that allows us give the services that you need, okay. nothing more than that right Fantastic. um and also even the access internally mm. the, the way we we have done our technology is that it is only open um different aspects of the data is only open to people who to the um to the healthcare provider who will need the data to deliver the service to you mm. um but the, the uh the way we ensure that your data doesn't get leaked doesn't get um um, transferred is we ensure that we're compliant mm. uh, to the guideline that has been uh, laid down. But we're very, we're a very responsible company at Health Tracker. We truly believe that everyone has the right to um, their data and not to be shared and yeah. to be as responsible as possible to, uh, with the data that we're collecting, mm. um, especially because the data is just being used to serve our customers. Nothing more, nothing less. All right. So final words, how can we improve the healthcare system in Nigeria, you know, even with technology, any other ideas you might have? Absolutely. Um, one I would have to say is that as healthcare professionals, so for us at Health Tracker, one of the things that we look at is empathy towards the healthcare, so, uh, healthcare challenges that we all go through, mm. right? Because, you know, millions of us are going through different challenges, um, healthcare challenges, and we need to begin to think about how do we solve the problems that we're all going through, yeah. right? So, you know, a, a, a good statistic, 63% of new HIV cases are found in young women mm. in Sub-Saharan Africa. Why women? Women go through the stigma um, of having to seek sexual health solutions. Mm. So we launched a product called Lemon, so that, you know, when they go into the pharmacy, all they need to do is ask for Lemon, and then their pharmacy is able to offer them STI screenings, mm. right? How and we provide solutions to the healthcare challenges that most of us are going through. Um, and that's some of the work that we do at Health Tracker. And I think that that's something that we can learn and we can all, um, and we can all adopt. So, right. you know, one of the reasons um, 
um, or rather one of the solutions as well is for big organizations like Google who support startups um, is able to use their platform and say, okay, you know what, the solutions that we have, how can young startups who are starting out, who are doing incredible work, how do we support them with our resources right. so that they can reach and scale their solutions to millions of uh, That's people fantastic. in their company? All right. Exactly. So yeah. that, that's the way I would think about how do we scale? Yeah. Let's leverage our solutions. Let's collaborate. Um, private, public. Um, Everyone put your hands in the plow pretty much. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Roman. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. It's been lovely, you know, having a conversation with, with you on this. And I just hope that everyone is governizing, putting their hands in the plow. And we help, you know, the healthcare sector move it forward. Thank you so much for coming, Ifeolua. Thank you so much for